Hey, what's up everybody? Kendrick Dish here. I got an interesting um, Facebook message actually a couple of days, well, a few weeks ago at this point, and from a friend of mine um, on Facebook, they are interested in doing some documentary work and they asked me uh, to recommend some equipment. So here is the email, to the message. Kendrick, I hope all's well with you and you're staying safe. I have a question. I'm about to start doing a couple of personal projects, documentaries. Would you mind suggesting production equipment? My budget is 5,000 bucks. So uh, <laughs> that was, that was kind of got me thinking about like, well, 5,000 is a pretty decent number. Um, and what equipment would I suggest for that? Instead of kind of hammering off just a few quick, like do this, do that. I actually decided to put some real good thought into it and think about if I was starting over with 5,000 bucks and I wanted to do documentary work, uh, which, what gear would I buy? Um, right after this intro, we're going to get right into that list. Here we go. All right, guys. Hey, I'm Kendrick Dish. I'm a commercial filmmaker and documentary commercial photographer, uh, all around content creator. And um, it's fun to always think about equipment. I, I always talk and think about equipment quite a bit and always staying up to date. But you don't always need the best gear. Sometimes you need solid, reliable gear. Uh, not everybody's a gearhead. They just want to make a project. So uh, for my friend who sent me the message, 5,000 bucks is our budget. I wanted to go ahead and dive into this list. Now, of course, anytime you're talking about can like equipment, and this is, it kind of starts with the camera. You kind of build off the camera. So I started thinking about like, here we are in the, towards the end of 2020. What camera is good for documentary work that can help us we buy the camera plus we got to buy all the other stuff. So I can't spend $5,000 on a camera. I got to go way cheaper than that. So that I still have room in my budget for some audio and some lights and some other stuff. So what came to mind for me at first was the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K uh, that comes in at, you know, about 1300 bucks, but you got to buy a lot of stuff to go with that. But then I remembered this is documentary. You know, this is run and gun. This isn't quite as cinematic. You don't necessarily need raw, Blackmagic raw. You don't necessarily need the high-end 4K. You don't necessarily need all the stuff that the Blackmagic provides. So I was like, well, what camera would I do if I was really going after documentary work? And that camera came out to be the Canon C100 Mark II. Now that is an old camera by this standard, but it's still a fantastic documentary camera, a great run and gun. It does 60p, 1080 footage. So you're going to get a lot of uh, deep, like you're going to get some great footage and you're going to be able to, you can do, you can slow it down a little bit and get some decent slow-mo out of it. And so uh, it records the SD cards. Those are cheap. And so overall um, with the XLR inputs and all that, it just seemed like the best priced compromise on a camera so that we can actually get going. So how much does that cost? Well, I would certainly suggest buying used. Don't buy a new six-year-old camera. That doesn't make any sense, but go to the used market and buy one. And so what I was able to find was I was able to find a good one at gearfocus.com for 1900 bucks. Now, by the time you see this video, this one will probably be gone, but I just used $2,000 as my price for a decent and good shape Canon C100 Mark II with the dual pixel autofocus. That's an important thing for documentary too. When you're running and gunning, the autofocus is going to be great. The Blackmagic, not so great with autofocus. Not at all with autofocus. But, but this has the dual pixel autofocus. And so for 2000 bucks, we have a camera body with XLR inputs. And I think that is a good starting place. So now, keeping to our $5,000, um, we have to come up with about $3,000 of other stuff to support this project. So I went to Amazon and I created a shopping list and let's go down the shopping list one at a time. In the, obviously the next thing is we're gonna want a lens. And so the lens that I decided to look into is this Canon 24 to 105 F4 version two. Now. I, use, I have this lens and I use this lens all the time. I stick it on the camera and I shoot a lot of stuff with it. In fact, I just got back from a job uh, and I used this on my Sony A7S R, sorry, A7R3 
for photography, and I shot f f a ton of photography with this lens. It's just a great lens. Uh, is it is it 2.8? No, but most of the time you don't need 2.8. F4 gets the job done, especially for interviews. Don't shoot your interviews at 2.8 unless you're real confident that that subject is holding still. So for interviews, an F F4 is kind of the minimum that I use uh, for interviews. So uh, overall, this is a general usage lens and I would stick this on the front of that C100 Mark II and I would leave it on there and this would be the package. One lens, one camera, and it does it all. Next, we need some memory cards. Um, you know, SanDisk is a reliable brand. I picked up, th I wanted three of these 64 gig cards and that came out to be, you know, at 20 bucks a piece, 60 bucks for cards. Perfect. Um, then I, it's not in the quite right, right, not in the right order here, but we needed a shotgun microphone for that to pick up Nat sound. So the Deity shotgun mic, this is something I have not personally used. So I can't take that with a grain of salt. It seems like a good mic. It seems well reviewed. Deity seems like a brand that's innovative and coming out with some great stuff. But a shotgun mic, you need one. There are a lot of different ones. This one at 359 seemed like a reliable brand and a uh, good price point. So with audio, you get what you pay for. So we got so you know you can pick out another mic, but this one seemed like a good bet. And you need an XLR cable to go from the camera to the mic. So this, I, again, I'm not particular to this brand. I don't know this brand from any other brand, but it seemed like it was well reviewed and I needed a couple of them. I just needed a couple of them. Uh, one as a backup really. So a three foot cable to go from the mic to the camera. So your shotgun mounted camera it, mic is ready to go. Um, then uh, let's look at the lighting. Well, let's keep, let's stay on audio. So wireless audio package here. This is another one from Deity. This is what I would buy if I was starting over. What's great about this wireless kit is it comes with two transmitters that can connect to one receiver. Now, the reason that's great is because if you ever have two people on camera, you only need to have one input going into your camera, one, trans one receiver coming into the camera. That is, that is great. I really like that. 10 hour battery life, um, these things, Again, I have not personally used these, but this is what I would buy if I was ready to go. Um, they come in, the, you get the little kit and uh, well-reviewed on the internet. So this is what I would do. Now for documentary, you may not need wireless mics, but think about how many times you're gonna wanna stick a mic on somebody as they walk around in somewhere and you're just gonna wanna film it. So I think wireless mics are a must for documentary work. So this is the best package I was able to come up with. And as you'll notice, we've spent about $1,000 um, or a little more than $1,000 of our $3,000 on audio. Keep that in mind. Your audio is really important. That's why we spent uh, a fifth of our budget on audio gear. Now lighting is just as, <laughs> it's, it's really important too. So I, my light kit is actually one light. I've done a ton of work with one light and I think it can look great. Is it better than having a ton of lights? No, but you gotta make your budget count. And so getting one really good light instead of four crappy lights is a much better investment. You can add more lights when your budget allows. You can get away with one light all the time. I use one light on 60% of my stuff. It just, it gets the job done. You can also get a reflector. You can use a window and daylight to, to hair light somebody or backlight somebody. You can do all those things. You can get creative with your lighting. Um, so this aperture light is the one that I use. I love it. It has a very great look to it. Uh, it's very soft right out of the light. And um, it's actually quick and easy to set up and, and take down. And you have a wireless controller that you can use to control it. So that is nice comes with its own little kit um, and handle, you know, you can kind of see these things here. All good things. Now we need a modifier to go with that. So what I've picked out for the modifier is this small, smaller, the smaller light dome, the mini two from Aperture. And it is 
foldable and travel friendly, which is one of the important things I wanted to make sure that we covered is that this stuff needs to be quick and compact and ready to roll. Uh, quick and easy to set up, quick and easy to take down, uh, quick and easy to pack and get in and out of your location because with documentaries, you, you sometimes you're in a real big hurry. So this is uh, paired with this uh, Aperture Light. This is a fantastic option. Um, let's look at one of the other things we definitely need is a light stand. So Matthews is a fantastic brand. They make very solid gear. Uh, this is a travel friendly light stand. So it actually is smaller than a standard light stand and it folds, it folds upward, the feet fold up and what that, that allows you to have a smaller, um, it allows you to have a smaller stand really for travel. Now I actually have this stand and it is for the price, the durability and the size, it is the best combination. So it's, it's very durable from a reputable brand. It goes up to seven feet high and it's also, um, it has a, a folded uh, length of 22 inches. So it fits into a bag. The bag I'm gonna recommend can hold up to a 23 inch light stand. So um, keeping all the stuff in, in cases and stuff, you, you really pay attention to how big these things are. Some light stands, I have light stands that are four feet tall and it doesn't fit into a bag and you just got your arms full of light stands and stuff. It's not a good look. You walk into a place with your arms full of crap. Um, so anyway, that's a good light stand for that light. It's, it's, you may, if you, you may want a heavier duty light stand, but this one could get the job done, I think. All right, back to the list. Um, tripod. Now, tripod, you need a tripod, but you don't want, I don't, I don't believe in spending a lot of money. If you're on a tight budget, spending a lot of money on a tripod. Don't, you don't need a really fancy tripod. This one I've actually used. I've traveled with this one. Um, I don't own it right now, but I have definitely used it. And it's a very capable tripod. There's not many complaints about it. it, it it's for the price, it's a good deal. One of the great things about it is that it can actually become a monopod as well. So you can undo one of the legs and pop off. Um, I can't remember how it's done, but it becomes a monopod. And so um, there's a lot of times a monopod is a great way to shoot. I like shooting with a monopod for video. It's, it's quick, it's easy. You don't always need a gimbal. Sometimes the, the monopod is the way to go. And this one, you get two for one. You get a monopod, you get a tripod, and also you're saving on your budget. So this is a good place to save some money in, in the list. So um, what are we up to? We are now up to, we look at our total here, we're up to $3,000 in our cart. Let's slide this over. You can see my subtotal there, $3,003. So add the 2,000 for the camera that we're gonna buy used and we are right at $5,003. Now, you know, this didn't cover sales tax. This didn't cover shipping. I'm an Amazon Prime customer, so I could get pretty much free shipping on this stuff, but you may not be, and you may have to spring for some shipping. So that's our 5,000 bucks, but I'm not done yet. I wanna mention that if you have a little bit more money, there's one thing that I really, I, I, it was really hard for me to get this down to 5,000 bucks, but I did it, and here is what I would suggest you get for all this gear. I'm going to suggest that you get this Think Tank Messenger, or sorry, Think Tank Logistics Manager bag. This is a big bag, and it will hold a lot. It will hold all this gear. It will hold the light stand. It will hold the tripod. It will hold the modifier, it will hold the light, it will hold the lenses and the cameras even put together, and um, the audio kit. Now, I don't know that 100% for sure because I haven't bought all this stuff and I haven't bought this bag yet. So I can't, like I'm not guaranteeing that it'll fit, but in initial estimates, it'll fit. And the reason that I'm suggesting one bag is because walking into a place a place of business or a classroom or somewhere and you just have one roller and all your gear in that is in that that is awesome that is just a fantastic efficient kit now this bag is not going to be 
carry on friendly. And I wouldn't suggest taking your taking your gear like in this bag on a flight because you're gonna have to put it in. You're gonna have to check it. Checking this bag would check fine, but with important gear in there, it's it's not the best to check. Maybe a Pelican case is better for travel with. But for running around town, um, this is fantastic. This bag is great, and I have the larger version of this. I had the Logistics Manager 50, and that bag is is humongous. I want to get this. 30 size because I think this is a really great combination of size and, and features. So uh, this is on my wish list. I'm going to buy this at some point, um, but I would I would spring for the extra $424. So we're up to about $5,500 now, and I would I would get this bag to carry all your stuff in. So right now this list does not contain a. Um, unfortunately, it does not contain. A uh, bag to hold all this in. We couldn't get that in budget, but I would suggest it. I would encourage it. But maybe, maybe you have a bag already. Maybe you have a tub, like a, a a tub you can carry it in. Maybe you can find a. Maybe you can buy this when you have a little more budget. But um, but keep that in mind. So that's it. That's the five thousand um, dollars. Was there anything that I missed? Was there anything that you would get that's not in this list? Is there anything that I'm that I'm simplifying too much, or that uh, some little gadget that I just that everyone needs but I didn't put in here? Uh, let me know. Let me know in the comments. I would love to hear what you guys think. Uh, I would like to hear what you guys would do for five thousand bucks. Re- you know, change my mind. Let me know. Uh, maybe the C, maybe the Canon C100 Mark II is a, is a ridiculous camera to buy in 2020. I don't know. <laughs> what? Tell me what you would buy instead. Tell me what running gun camera you'd buy instead. I'm interested in hearing. So anyway, this is the kit I would try and buy if I had 5,000 bucks from starting over for documentary work. Let me know your feedback in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I look forward to hearing what you guys think. And I will talk to you later. See ya.